losing money and a yeah. calm window surround. Yeah. That was about it. But then, the, well, when the Denali came out, then it was like, ooh. ooh. And what a grill. It's got a grill and a <laughs> like body Like nicer wheels or it's something. It's got a grill and a body kit. Yeah, everyone where You I know you up. want a body kit on your truck. That's <laughs> a mandatory thing that you need. To have. That's why I have a Mansory G-Wagon on there. Ooh. <laughs> My, I was at, I go to like PT and this guy was complaining. I, I, I'm kind of known for being the car guy at my PT place because I'm Shocker. always pulling up in a fucking press car or something. Yeah. And this one guy was like, I went to order a G Wagon and they wanted $100,000 over. Can you believe it? And I go, yes. Like, you are already paying the D-bag tax <laughs> for this. It does yeah. nothing better than anything else on the road. It's and a glorified you, Jeep Wrangler. If you must have it, they are putting the D-bag tax right on that thing. You know, I just learned the loophole of G-Wagons. Because I always, like, you know, you drive through, like, L.A. and you're in, like, Burbank. And you're like, yo, how does everyone here have a G63? These are, like, 300 grand. Yeah. And it's then the, I realized it's the it's, commercial tax Yeah, thing. it's the commercial taxing. <laughs> so if you own a business, you yeah. buy a G-Wagon, you can write it off. And Bro, I was like, straight chicken tax. Bro, Shit. America. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, TRX is so heavy, you can write it off twice. No. You can write off 200% because it's so heavy. <laughs> this is such an obnoxious vehicle, yeah. you could write it off twice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how did you end up at Hoonigan? I just remember one day you were just there on videos. Mm. How did they find you? Um, where did you find them? So, actually, it's a really long and convoluted story, but I'm going to make it as long quick as Long format radio. This is meant oh, for yes. this. Okay. I thought we had a strict one hour, so it's like, nope. all right. Um, so, Alex Bernstein. Oh, yeah. You're, you know him. Yes. So. Photographer. Yeah. Very talented. Yeah. Now he's a, still, still a photographer. Now he's a time attack racer also. He's been building BMWs. Um, he's like one of my closest friends. So, uh, this dude I knew was in Brian Scotto's car club when he had auto creek which was like a volkswagen car club oh, back really? in the day and uh he lived a town over from me and we were all into volkswagens he was like a bit older than me like i think right now he's like 42 i'm 33 yeah. but like we got along through cars so uh you know we knew each other for a couple years and he hit me up one day and was like hey looking for someone who could take photos and write to work for this magazine that my friend runs. This would have been 060? 060. Zero 060. Uh -huh. So I got Alex the interview there. Alex gets the job. So then he hangs out with like Ron and Matt Cicillo and Scotto and Tony Spinelli. Harmer. Spinelli was in yeah, 060. Yeah, Andrew also. Link. Yeah. Um, well, I feel so like many everyone people was there. fucking were in 060. Or like Harris in general. You yeah. Know? Um, so I would always hang out with those guys and got to know them. We'd go party in the city and stuff because I lived in New York back then. And I'd always, then when Brian, Ron, and Matt left to go work for Ken, you know, and then Hoonigan started and all that, like, I would see those guys and just be like, yo, give me a job, give me a job, give me a job. And one day, like, out of the blue, Scotto called, texts me, and it's like, yo, it's Scotto, job opening at Hoonigan. And I'm like, sick, I'm down, here's my resume. Over, like, six months of, I mean, if you guys know Brian, you know he, like, hardly answers his phone. Yeah, he's... Truck, he's being a bit LA, man, ah, fucking socialist. <laughs> Meanwhile, we had this motherfucker in Colorado Springs, and I had to make like 85 yeah, point turns sucks. to park Have it you everywhere. driven a TRX? <laughs> yes. Dude, actually, it's the oh, stupidest, shit, I it's forgot. The stupidest vehicle ever. Made. Your Instagram post on the TRX <laughs> was so spot on. I know it's like very triggering for people. But like I, People I were really a, offended. Yeah, I had a TRX for a couple of days too, and I I drive a Raptor, and I was like, this truck is the most egregious, <laughs> obnoxious, yeah. like piece of machinery ever made. Yeah. Like Dodge was or Ram, sorry, they don't even want to associate with each yeah. other. Ram was just like, we're gonna do the most. Yeah. I mean, even <laughs> down to the hood, the hood has everything you could ever do to a hood it's got lights it's got, it's nostrils, got a scoop hoods graphic it's got, dude, it's got graphics it's got a cow it's got scoops yeah. it's got ducks it's got vents like anything you could ever put on a hood that's ever been on a hood before they were like we're that's doing it all actually really funny we're doing yeah, it, it has, all. Look at it has everything yeah, it has every drop down box yeah just like check it out and i wrote i was like look this thing is massively capable like you can fucking huck it off a sand dune like good congratulations yeah. at the same time <laughs> It's so offensive to our heating planet. Dude, like, we drove it. We drove it to San Luis Obispo. And not only does the OEM exhaust drone like you put like a crazy aftermarket exhaust on, but we had to stop for gas like three times. Yes. And you're like, holy crap, this car comes from the factory getting single digit yeah. MPG. <laughs> yeah. Like, and they're like, yeehaw, motherfucker. Yeah. I, I have a lot of respect for FCA, though, for doing it. You I know? mean, I, the, the Hellcat everything strategy 
is a uh, is a real good distraction for not investing in technology at all. <laughs> They're like, listen, we don't have yeah. the money to develop things, so we're just gonna drop this fucking <laughs> seven hundred. Which is funny because you know who did everything. that two decades ago? Mercedes, Chevrolet. Remember oh, yeah. when they were putting like Corvette engines and everything, mm-hmm. and they had like the Trailblazer SS and the uh, Impala SS. Yeah, and they had the. Corvette, the Camaro, all that like all stuff. that stuff. LS. Yeah, all they were putting L- LS, the all LS Club. And now Chevy is just kind of asleep at the wheel. We don't know what they're doing. Oh, you don't like the Escalade V? You don't think that's... The, or the Blazer? The, the new Blazer? <laughs> it's, just a, it's a people carrier in like, in like a tough suit. I just actually, I just learned, because our friend, our friend, uh, our friend gets some kind of a discount at a, at a Chevy dealer or whatever, and he wanted a new SUV. He was trading his old Grand Cherokee, and he goes, I, th- I think I'm going to get a Blazer, and he really has to carry a bunch of shit. And I, yeah. I, le- I just learned that the Blazer and the Trailblazer are not the same anymore. They make two of you know, them they make t- basically the same type of They're thing. different sizes. Oh, okay. One is like the size of a Ford Escape, and one is the size of a Ford Explorer. Like they're, okay. but they 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 both have Blazer in them, and they're two different vehicles. Well, GM, I didn't know this. GM's always been kind of crazy with that. I mean, my dad worked for a Chevy dealership when I was growing up, so he used to get demo cars mm. for like all the brands. And I remember it'd be like, Oldsmobile, uh, GMC, like, yeah, like yeah. they all made the same exact car yeah. with like very minor differences yeah. in it.